Halo has always been a franchise ripe with potential beyond the core shooters. When Halo Wars was announced, I saw the realization of that potential and was eager to see what came next. While we got things like the Halo Interactive Strategy game and Halo Wars Risk, it would be several years before we got more video games expanding beyond the first-person shooters. But recent years have been quite generous with other genres for Halo games, much to my excitement. So when Halo Fireteam Raven was announced, it was nothing short of a miracle that I didn't start crying out with joy and elation in the middle of work. Developed by Raw Thrills and Play Mechanics, Halo Fireteam Raven is a rail shooter arcade cabinet, something I never thought I wanted from Halo, but I'm so glad we finally have. Up to four players can take control of the ODST team Fireteam Raven, one of many ODST squads that deployed with the Pillar of Autumn during the events of Halo CE. You fight through the game from the perspective of these ODSTs, experiencing the classic story from a new angle, with new events, especially for fans who haven't read Halo The Flood. So let's dive into the game's story, its deeper connections to the lore, and its potential future. This is Halo Fireteam Raven. The story opens pretty much right where CE does, with the Pillar of Autumn confronting the fleet of Particular Justice near the newly discovered Installation 04. Captain Keys declares, Combat Alert Alpha. And the ODST squad Fireteam Raven, led by Ethan Graves, is tasked by Major Antonio Silva with taking out Covenant Invaders. Interestingly, during the cutscene, Silva hands Graves what looks like Wellesley's AI chip. Although it looks to be an AI chip, it is in fact a mobile communications module. AI like Wellesley are hardware bound and not easily transportable. This comms module allows Raven to remain in contact with the AI and up to date on any developments. Anyway though, Raven immediately goes to work blasting through Covenant forces in what looks to be the engine room. It certainly resembles the generator room from the Halo Reach map Condemned, though it obviously isn't the engine room seen in Halo CE. It is noted in Halo The Fall of Rage that the engines the Autumn Sports following its refit had a central reactor linked by two secondary ones, so maybe this is one of those secondary reactors. From the engine room, Raven moves on to taking out incoming Sarah fighters and, to my delight and surprise, Banshee fighters from Halo Reach, using the Autumn's 90mm defense turrets. And incidentally, you get to the controls for those guns by walking past a couple of bodies floating in a hull that's now exposed to the vacuum of space. That's fine for a game that will be played by kids, right? Jokes aside, Raven continues to plow through waves of Covenant until you come across a familiar hallway and a familiar hero. Here we have the first of three Master Chief cameos, and this one is by far my favorite. We get an excellent reinterpretation of a classic moment from Halo CE from another perspective, seeing Chief kick ass in ways only a Spartan can. Now, there are two points I have to bring up here in both regard Ken and accuracy. Let me start off by saying this moment is badass, make no mistake. In my Fireteam Raven raw playthrough, you can hear my excitement. However, this is a channel that deals in canon, so we're going to have to dive into inaccuracies at some point. First is whether this is a reinterpretation of the classic CE cutscene wherein Chief picks up a Marine jumping from a nearby blast, tosses him into an escape pod, and escapes the Pillar of Autumn. In Fireteam Raven, we see the Chief make the toss, make a couple of shots, then an explosion, seemingly the escape pod leaving. However, CIA391 of Halopedia pointed out that this could be an extension of the CE cutscene. Basically, Chief tosses the Marine once and takes a couple shots with his pistol, moved into the airlock, tosses the Marine again, scans for additional hostiles, then enters the pod and leaves. It's a toss-up, really, but given some of the other canon liberties taken in Fireteam Raven, I'm more inclined to think that it's a reinterpretation. The second big thing is how Raven approaches this hallway of escape pods. Raven takes out some Covenant and then rounds a corner to the right to find the hallway in question. In CE, the Chief approaches from the opposite direction, making a left into the hallway. The problem here is that in both CE and Fireteam Raven, the hallway that Chief or Raven are coming from ends in a wall, not a closed door suggesting the hall could continue, which would have allowed both approaches to be canon. Basically, Raw Thrills flipped the hallway approach for Fireteam Raven for some reason. From a canon standpoint, the big problem is that the way Raven approached just doesn't make sense with the Autumn's layout. With where these escape pods are, there would be no hallway that would allow a right turn into that hallway. Given so many assets and geometry were seemingly pulled directly from CEA, among other places, the hallway flip had to be a deliberate decision, and 
I can't imagine a reason why it was done. I know I'm nitpicking, but I've always stressed the importance of small details, and there's no exception here. Moving forward though, Raven is ordered to evacuate as the Autumn prepares to land, land, on the ring. Raven fights their way to their ODST pods, and we get a pretty awesome cutscene to close out the first level. Raven jumps into their pods, which we get to see close from a first-person perspective that seems to be a callback to ODST. They drop, the drop akin to a mix between ODST and Halo 2's drop, and the Autumn enters the ring's atmosphere, which is pretty damn cool to see. On the ground, Raven emerges from their pods just in time to see the Pillar of Autumn fly over their heads and begin their long walk to the inevitable crash site. The second level opens with Raven approaching said crash site just as more UNSC forces begin their assault. Raven hops into a warthog and helps out. And here we come across an event straight out of Halo the Flood. In that book, after establishing Alpha Base and rescuing Captain Keys, around the time of the mission to the Silent Cartographer, a mission was enacted to retake the Pillar of Autumn and secure some much needed resources and equipment from it. An hours long battle was raged as the UNSC pushed the Covenant out of mission critical areas of the Autumn. In Fireteam Raven, we get to see some of that battle. It's certainly much larger in scale than the book implied, but I can certainly understand needing to scale things up for the sake of gameplay. It should also be noted that Raven would have been walking for over 28 hours to get to the Pillar of Autumn, as the assault on the Autumn began around 28 hours after the Autumn was abandoned. Oddly, it was Wesley that directed Raven to the crash site rather than Alpha Base. Although, depending on where Raven landed, it might have been that the Autumn was just on the way. Alpha Base was said to be several kilometers downspin from the Autumn's crash site. As we don't really get any context for where everything is in relation to everything else, which directions are up and down spin in any given level or location, it's possible that Wellesley was directing Raven to Alpha and that the Autumn crash site just happened to be on the way. Or perhaps Wellesley slightly altered their path when the operation to retake the Autumn was launched. I also have to mention that the assault on the Autumn was led by Major Silva's second-in-command, Lieutenant Melissa McKay, who is notably absent from the entire game. McKay was easily my favorite character from Halo the Flood, and I'm utterly disappointed that she isn't even mentioned in this game, let alone given a real role like she deserves. No bueno, 343 and raw thrills. No bueno. But getting back to the story, Raven joins up with the other UNSC forces and takes on some Covenant, including drones. Here we have an example of a soft retcon, in that the drones were never mentioned in Halo the Flood or seen in Halo CE. They do appear in a place, though, where their presence doesn't really interfere with established events. There was plenty of the retaking of the Autumn that we never actually saw in Halo the Flood, and obviously these events were never in Halo CE, so it's not too big a deal. Just an event we never saw before. Kind of like most of Raven's battles. Anyway, after clearing out Covenant forces, Raven catches a ride to Alpha Base, another location from the Flood, where the majority of UNSC operations would be launched from on Installation 04. Interestingly, we can see in the introduction cutscene that the design for Alpha Base pulls heavily from geometry first seen on the Halo Reach map Ridgeline, the remake of Timberland. Why is this noteworthy? Besides just being a cool easter egg, there's a bit of a history that plays into all this. When Ridgeline was released back in 2011 with the anniversary edition of Halo CE, it came with the following description. Overlooking one of Halo's impressive relay complexes, this idyllic cliffside once served as a UNSC staging area. So back then, fans immediately thought, Alpha Base. However, more attentive fans pretty quickly knew that Ridgeline couldn't be Alpha Base. That UNSC outpost was located on a mesa, which Ridgeline definitely isn't. Nevertheless, I think 343 did intend Ridgeline as something of a reference to Alpha Base, so seeing some of the geometry reused for the actual Alpha Base is a nice nod to fans familiar with that history. Anyway though, Raven is brought back to Alpha Base and told that the ring is a weapon called Halo, just as the Covenant attacks. And once again, we have events from Halo the Flood playing out. Also, once again, an event that Lieutenant Melissa McKay played a key role in, and she's nowhere to be seen. God damn. But that aside, I love taking part in these events. You get to take on hunters, shoot down banshees and dropships with Covenant turrets, and with bottomless clip rocket launchers, which is absolutely fun as hell. 
However, one of the coolest and most interesting moments in this section is when you take on forces being deployed from a lich. This was a real standout moment as I wasn't expecting something like this at all. In fact, I initially thought it was cannon breaking, but then I recall that the lore for liches stated that they had been deployed during the Human Covenant War. However, encounters with liches often left no survivors, so the aircraft went undocumented until 2556, hence T-56. Post-war dropships were in short supply, so liches started to see greater deployment. And for anyone interested, this lich is called Upright Chalice, which was deployed from the destroyer Blameless Conceit, a ship commanded by Shipmaster Orna Fulsami. Orna and his destroyer first appeared in Halo the Flood. Eventually, Raven is evacuated from Alpha Base for another mission. In the books, and you get a hint of this in the game, the battle would continue past the Covenant invasion, the Flood eventually showing up. I also want to note that this level takes place around the time that Master Chief had been kidnapped, so to speak, by 343 Guilty Spark from the swamps of Alpha Halo. And before we move on, let's talk about the Falcon. This was a point of contention for lore fans when Raven was first announced. However, the presence of this vehicle is fairly easily explained. In fact, I touched on it back when I covered the announcement trailer. Essentially, when the Pillar of Autumn landed on Reach, Falcons could have easily been transferred onto the ship for one reason or another. I wouldn't mind a deeper explanation at some point, but I don't really think it's necessary. The next level opens with Raven being informed of a new threat having appeared on the ring, which we all know refers to the Flood. Their Falcon flies them into a familiar cannon and the team sits to work taking out some Covenant. However, the Flood soon show up. Raven clear out wave after wave of Flood and Banshees until they're dropped into the canyon itself to secure the area. Again, they clear wave after wave of Flood, including tank pure forms. Now, this may seem odd at first glance, it certainly did to me, but it's actually rather easily explained. On the multiplayer map Cold Storage from Halo 3 set on Installation 05, you can see a pure form in storage. It's not hard to imagine that Installation 04 also had pure forms in storage that could have been released during the Flood outbreak in Halo CE. Maybe not in the numbers we see during Halo Fireteam Raven, that's just one of those gameplay concessions you gotta make, but certainly a few. Anyway, Raven continues to fight and eventually we get our second Master Chief cameo as he slow-mo shotguns a pure form in the back, nods to Raven, then continues on with his business. It's badass as hell, and you can hear as much in my Fireteam Raven gameplay video, but as a lore nerd, I do have to call out the canonicity of this scene. The level takes place during the CE Mission 2 Betrayals, towards the end when Master Chief was making his way to a Banshee so he could take out the last phase pulse generator. Not only did Chief never encounter pure forms during this section, this particular section also never featured any UNSC forces that could be retconned as ODSTs, and featured a ton of Covenant which Raven never fights, at least not on the ground. So, badass moment? Absolutely. Cannon breaking as hell? Also, absolutely. Anyway, Raven is eventually extracted, though their Falcon is damaged by a Wraith mortar shot as they exit the canyon. The next level opens with said Falcon crashing in an area which looks to have been heavily inspired by Forge World, some of the geometry possibly even being pulled directly from that map. Very little happens here story-wise, but there were some great set pieces as Raven mows through Covenant and Flood, holding out until a Pelican can extract them. We get to see Flood taking down a Phantom, and we see Flood Juggernauts for the first time taking down Sangheili and later Hunters. The Flood Juggernaut set pieces are some of my favorite in the game, especially them taking down the Hunters. I'd love to see stuff like this in a console or PC Halo title someday. And speaking of Juggernauts, we again need to dive into the lore. The big question here is whether these forms were specimens kept from the Forerunner Flood War, or if they were newly spawned during the events of Halo CE. Per Halo Wars 2, we know Abominations are evolved forms of the Juggernaut, referred to in the Phoenix Logs as a command form. Abominations form when a standard hive cannot be easily established and the Flood must remain mobile. Given this information, I have to wonder if Juggernauts are a form created under similar circumstances. Or perhaps they're created as the Flood begins or as they are constructing a proto -grave mind to help command existing Flood forms, not unlike Key Minds. Perhaps something of a proto Key Mind. Hopefully we can find out for sure someday. Moving on, Raven is eventually picked up by a Pelican and brought to an area near the Pillar of Autumn's crash site. This is the setting for the final level. 
the final stand. Raven are contacted by Wellesley and informed of Covenant and Flood forces converging on the site. Further, they will have to hold these forces off in order to allow the Master Chief enough time to detonate the Pillar of Autumn's engines. This, above everything else, is probably my favorite addition to the canon. At this point in Halo the Flood, Cortana had been able to contact Wellesley, who in turn informed Major Silva of Chief and Cortana's plan to detonate the Autumn's fusion reactors and destroy Halo and the Flood. So, Silva had his forces take over the then-functional and thought-to-be Flood-free Truth and Reconciliation. They cleared it out of remaining Covenant, who were already devastated due to a recent visit from the Master Chief, and prepared to take off. Ultimately, though, Lieutenant McKay would figure out that the Flood was still on board, hiding in the ship, and ended up destroying the ship because Silva had become too blinded by ambition to listen to her. But anyway, I can definitely imagine that some UNSC forces were ordered to hold off the Covenant and Flood outside the Pillar of Autumn, while Chief and Cortana were doing their work. It adds a ton of weight to the final level of Halo CE when you play again knowing that others are laying down their lives for you. And further, I love that Raven just accepts the mission without question. While you can, to a degree, write this off as being the result of needing to condense everything, it comes across as a powerful moment in this situation. So, Raven is deployed and cuts through Covenant forces. At one point, while taking out Banshees, Wellesley informs Raven to hold their fire. Here we have our final Master Chief cameo, as his Banshee flies by, headed towards the Autumn. For their final mission, Raven is tasked with taking down a Scarab. They once again fight through Covenant and now Flood Forces, eventually picked up by an Attack Falcon, aka the kind with grenade launchers, and jump onto the Scarab. They take out its crew, and then destroy the core. It's a very nice mix of Halo 2 Scarab encounter and the Halo 3 Scarab fights, which works excellently as a final boss. The Scarab is destroyed as Raven jumps off. Surrounded by Flood, Raven consigns themselves to their fates as the Pillar of Autumn is destroyed. And that is Halo Fireteam Raven. For a rail shooter arcade cabinet, this game is an absolute blast. The levels each have their own unique moments and challenges, the environments all look amazing, as do all the enemy vehicles and units. The guns, sadly, don't feel all that unique, though there are exceptions such as the rocket launcher, the shotgun, and the turrets. Grenades don't really feel very powerful or useful, and it's easy to forget that you even have them or just waste them without noticing. Despite this, though, the game is more than worth it to replay. Story-wise, what little story is there? That's not a knock against the game, mind you, I was never expecting that much since it's an arcade cabinet. The game is easily enjoyable and digestible for casual fans, while fans of the deeper lore are given plenty of easter eggs and references. So it's a very nice balance between making things accessible and rewarding. The game takes a number of liberties with established events, though it's mostly in service to making the battles more fun, which I can't necessarily fault the game for. I will say though, this is why if anyone knows some of my older Waypoint posts, I've always been against adapting Halo novels into games. Things would have to be changed to make the game fun, so a faithful adaptation of events would never be possible. Fireteam Raven is a rare instance where balance is struck since it's mostly events that haven't been seen or aren't hurt too much by the changes. The only thing I really take issue with is the second Master Chief cameo. It's badass, but the Lord nerd in me can't let it slide completely. Still, at the end of the day, the game is an all-out fantastic experience, and I sincerely hope we can get more. Imagine a game set during the invasion of Earth, not necessarily during Halo 2, but in the weeks that followed, with some Blue Team cameos, in fact. Or how about the Battle of Tribute with some Spartan 3 cameos, or just playing as Spartan 3s? I sincerely hope Halo Fireteam Raven is a success so we can get more experiences like it. Not necessarily just arcade cabinets, mind you, but small experiences that delve into the broader Halo universe. So, rating time. Having sat on this for quite a while at this point, I think I can safely and genuinely give Halo Fireteam Raven an 8 out of 10. While its story is more sparse than console Halo titles, the gameplay is excellent and propels it upward in rating, at least for me. Fireteam Raven is out at all Dave & Buster's locations at this point, and it continues to appear at arcades and other locations across the world. Keep an eye on Halo Waypoint along with the play mechanics, raw thrills, and Halo Twitter accounts to see about locations near you, especially if you're international. 
Play Mechanics and Raw Thrills have said that they're dedicated to making the game available to as many people as possible. Hopefully that might eventually mean a home media port of some kind. I can imagine Fireteam Raven being a crazy awesome experience in VR, but I'm not holding my breath at this point. So what did you think of Fireteam Raven? Like it? Dislike it? Hoping to see something more or something greater born from its success? Let me know in the comments below. And stay tuned this Sunday for a deeper look at the fire team themselves, plus a little more as we dive into the recent Cannon Fodder article. I'm also hoping to get a short video or two queued up for while I'm in Seattle next week at PAX, so look forward to those. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing, and if you really love me, hit that notification bell and leave a thumbs up. These both really help out the channel. I wouldn't be where I am now without your views and support, so once again, thank you. Keep on being awesome, Canaanites.